today. I'm Piers Corbyn from Weather Action, Long Range Weather and Climate Forecasters. And today, the 27th of May, I'm going to talk a bit about what's been happening, especially in Britain uh, and the USA, for April and May, and then give a look f about the summer as a whole. Right, our weather forecast for the UK and the USA in April and May uh, have gone astoundingly well in uh, some respects, although for parts of the UK, certainly the uh, May forecast has been difficult, and indeed it's been difficult in the second half of May for all forecasters, interestingly. Nevertheless, our general picture for April and May has been correct, and May has been generally dry and warm, especially in the south, as we said. Um, a big highlight of the weather in April in the UK was, of course, the Royal Wedding. And as people know, in the forecast we put out on April the 1st, we said the weather on the day, despite the fact we knew, and we'd said this before, there was risks of showers around that time, we said the weather on the day in London for the Royal Wedding would be good to perfect. The British Met Office said, no, 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 showers, they said, were very likely, even heavy thundery showers, even deluges uh, around that time, and it's best to have an umbrella. Well, as you all know, our single forecast put out three weeks ahead was correct, and the Met Office's six forecasts on consecutive days for about a week or so ahead were all incorrect. And I'm glad we were right, as well as the royal couple were glad we were right, I would say, had, had they known we told them. And their picture of them driving away in an Aston Martin open top, I think, says it all. Now, another very significant event uh, in America has been all the tornadoes that have happened during April and May. And every one of our tornado active periods forecasted for the USA have been confirmed in April and May. And the most extreme periods of big tornado outbreaks in particular were forecast by us a long time ahead and verified. The most significant of all was the tornado swarm which happened around the 23rd, 24th or so, or 22nd to 25th of May in America. In the uh, Missouri area in particular. Now I'm going to read to you our long range forecast for that time put out on May the third. And this is the only time we've used the phrase tornado swarm during May. Um, it says uh, that we expect thunder, deluges, massive hail and a tornado swarm around the 23rd or 24th. And we say quite explicitly there will be a dangerous tornado swarm in the south and southeast parts of the USA, in particular Places under threat are Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, and Missouri. And as you know, Joplin in Missouri was three quarters destroyed by a massive tornado or group of tornadoes uh, in our time period. Now, this, of course, is very serious stuff in America. At the same time, they've got this massive flood in the, in the Mississippi. And of course the global warmers are leaping around and saying it is man-made climate change. Now that is lies. It is complete, utter nonsense produced by self-serving politicians and pseudo-scientists on a gravy train. And they have to be stopped because they're dangerous people. Because they're misleading the world. Now, as you know, the last time there was a very big... Uh, tornado event as dangerous as that one was, as has been pointed out, 58 years ago. 
Of course, there's tornadoes come and go, but generally speaking, it's clear, 58 years ago, there was a hell of a lot of tornadoes, just like this year. It's also been mentioned that the last time the Mississippi floods, and there's a lot of floods, of course, on the Mississippi, were as bad as this, was around, in periods of time, around 60 years ago. Um, now, we've pointed out that a lot of things in weather do run in 60-year cycles. And there was a very recent publication of the, uh, what's called the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. But it's a similar thing to the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, where the circulation of the Pacific, for example, changes a bit in cycles of roughly 60 years. The circulation of the Atlantic is what this one is about. Changes in cycles of roughly 60 years. And of course that 58 years is roughly 60 years. We at Weather Action understand why this is and can explain it. Right? And we announced this in the Criterion Restaurant in December 2008 on the 100th anniversary of H.G. Wells' Um, presidency of the uh, Royal College of Science Association where I explained and this is our theory, no one else's that if you understand that the weather systems on the earth are driven by solar magnetic connections modulated by the moon's orbit interrupting the solar wind then you can conclude that there's going to be beats between these two influences. This doesn't explain lots of detail, but it explains general pictures. Beats between these influences, between something which is happening every 9.3 years and something which happens every 22 years. And the beat period between these two is worked out by this formula. And it's around about 58 years. Might be 55, might be 65, but, you know, that sort of thing. This explains the general throb, if you like, of the climate systems around the, the world. There's other throbs of the magnetic cycle of 22 years and so forth. But that explains why, generally speaking, we've got a lot of things happening now which were also happening 60 years ago or thereabouts. Nothing to do with carbon dioxide and the people who say that are trying to trick you and the politicians who put that forward have to be called to account. So the difference between what we say and what the global warmers say about the weather is we have science behind us and they do not. So, now then, time for a bit of forecasting for the summer as a whole, particularly in Britain and Europe and the USA. The first thing to realise is that we did say a year ago that we were in for a period of extreme and very extreme weather events which would go on for some years. The reason for that being a very specific situation of the Sun-Earth magnetic connections and the modulation of these connections by the Moon. And this causes, for example, blocking of the jet stream on occasions and therefore floods and dry spells and things like that and also leads to, under certain circumstances, very extreme events such as the uh, tornadoes and, 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 and floods and so forth. OK, the next thing coming up is between May the 31st and June the 5th, especially in the, in the June part of that, we're expecting very significant events on the Sun and certain very special modulations uh, from the Moon which is going to cause uh, very extreme weather events around the world. Right? In the USA there will certainly be uh, more, more tornadoes um, and in the north part we expect some, uh, well, severe deluges, blasts of snow 
ice and hail in, in, in Canada and, and uh, northern USA and very strong winds. In Britain, we expect very heavy rain, strong winds, thunderstorms, tornadoes even in the UK uh, are a high possibility and local flooding in this period up to June the 5th. And at the same time, our trial forecasts of major earthquake risk show it's very likely there will be some very major earthquakes or at least one very major earthquake around the world in that time, possibly reaching Richter scale 8, for example. These earthquake things are just trial forecasts and experimental, and that we don't know where they're going to be. But if you're interested in that, go on the website and have a look, weatheraction.com. Now, the rest of the summer around the world is going to see more extreme contrast uh, events. Um, there will be an uh, interesting time in America, that, that's for sure. Uh, the tropical storm season is going to be uh, interesting with some with, uh, well, notable things. And I, I don't mean just the American one, I mean the, the uh, typhoon season for the Pacific as well. Um, and there is going to be tendencies for certain blocking patterns leading to extremes. Um, specifically about Ireland and Britain, we can say we're in for a floody summer. Okay. The global warmers are talking complete utter nonsense based on nothing but their own self-interest when they declare we're in for another barbecue summer, another hottest ever. What they say is so predictable. Um, they could all retire and someone else could write the script. In fact, I dare say they do sometimes. Um, it, it will probably be the case that Scotland might be a bit better than the rest of, of Britain uh, at times. But certainly uh, during June, July and August, although there will be important regional variations and there will be, um, you know, some very warm and fine spells too, the general picture is wet with floods. Thank you. You've probably noticed over the last year or so, we have been consistently putting forward things a long time ahead, which have turned out to be correct. And the global warmers and their related meteorological operations have been putting forward things which have not worked. I mean, obviously, we make mistakes sometimes, uh, as, as they do too. But they are unable to do long-range forecasting and instead give you fiction, which is costing the country a lot of money, uh, all countries a lot of money in terms of subsidies for green nonsense. Now, I think it's time for scientific forecasting to come forwards and be used by the public and governments to save lives, because it can. And the global warmer's gravy train has to be stopped. But to do this means politicians have to be called to account. So please, when you see what the weather is actually doing in the summer, remember what the global warmers told you, what nonsense they're saying. Say to your politicians, stop. Put science in charge not ideology. Thank you.